Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're talking about gifts. A lot of people thinking about gifts. Giving is in the air. You, your collar just is doing something that I could. Well, because. I, I could help you with or I, you, you like is that. Is it undulating? You like that? Thank you. I kind of feel like I just want to say I want to get my neck covered. A little I just bit. feel like there are limits to the coziness that you should experience in public, mm -hmm. and I feel like you've crossed a line. I love crossing that line. Well, I'm just saying that I just feel like you've crossed a cultural line, and you're making other people feel uncomfortable because you're so comfortable. I'm a boundary pusher. <laughs> <laughs> so we ask you, mythical beast, to tell us the best gift you've ever received and who gifted it to you, implying that hey, we want a little bit of a story as much as uh, Twitter can stomach. Uh, and we said we might discuss it on an episode of Ear Biscuits. This is the 313th episode and we are discussing that. But we're not discussing that this is the 313th episode other than That's what you That's not what I was did. referring to. Uh, we're also gonna be talking about our best gifts ever and maybe some of the gifts that we've received over the years or maybe even given, given over the years yeah. uh, that come up as we tell some of your gifts. You know, tis the season for giving. And if your wife, has a birthday uh, of December 18th. Oh goodness. Uh, man, this part, this time of year, like literally, Pressure. like right now, because at the time we're recording this, mm -hmm. uh, I've, I still had a few weeks and. Uh, no, it seems like by your body posture, you have no plans. You know well, what'll help? Put your collar up, uh, just for a second. Just while you're talking about this, just kind of experience it. There well, you go. the thing. It's a little protection. The thing makes that. Makes you feel a little. This is what happens to more, me. Creative. I, I wish that she would change her birth date. I, I've lobbied, <laughs> I've lobbied for this and she says it's not acceptable. Because I'm I like, it. this time of year, you know, this time of year is so busy for us. It's like everything just gets piled at the end of the year. I don't remember to do so many other things. I start seeing areas of my house where like things are building up and then I see areas of my inbox that things are building up and then I'm like, oh, I have and to. And don't look inward. I, ha I have you to. Know, that's how I feel. I have to give something for my wife's birthday and for Christmas. And it it matters to her, so it. No, here's the thing. It doesn't? Uh, well, there are two disparate realities in within my wife. She's a complex woman. Number one, she really cares about gifts. She really cares about giving and she really cares about receiving gifts, naturally. That is her natural disposition. She comes from a family of gift givers and extravagant gift givers and extravagant gift receivers, meaning that when her family receives gifts from each other, there's lots of emotional release. And, and I come from a family where my mom <laughs> like gets everything for herself and just says, you got me this for my birthday. You got me this for Christmas. And she she gave ain't up. Ain't no arguing with that. You know, you, she right? gave up on my dad and my brothers a long time ago. Now, I mean, and we are we actually want we want to give, but she's just like you're not going to get it right. So I'm just going to get stuff for myself. Mm. And then also in my family, you know, my my dad. So it's just like you give my dad a gift. It's not like you're not going to get some. You're not going to get the response that you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to get this. You're going. Oh, I feel. What what, what response are you going to get? Because you know what the response my dad get. Yeah, yeah, I think is, you're, you can relate to this. You know, gets the shirt and it's just like, where do you expect me to wear this? <laughs> you, your dad does super honest. My dad does just enough to feel some social obligation, but not actually make you feel great about what you got. And listen, because and, and kinda, I have this, and I have a very similar personality. Is he kind of? He's doing it for he's do, he's he's giving as much as he can muster for it, the gifter because for him it's like it, it, gifts don't resonate with him maybe with you and I gifts are, I don't think with me that gifts much, are usually. resonating more with me as I get older mm -hmm. but the interesting thing about Jesse is that so this is the environment this is the nature and the nurture that she's bringing to the table but she married me and. I think I ch I changed her baseline level of expectations. Now, as I've established, changed. I, you could come up with a stronger verb. I am uh, I am a giver in many ways. <laughs> uh, 
And and, uh, and I actually, I like to give, but the thing is, is I have a little bit of like, you know, she's a, she's got opinions and she's got taste and I don't necessarily have taste. And so when you, so. Wow, a woman with opinions and taste. What ends up happening is I may not respond as heartily as she wants me to to something that is given to me and then I may not, but she, but here's the over 20 years of marriage, her expectations have centered in a place. Sunk. I, I know centered is the word that I want to use. They have, they become they have more realistic. Descended. And now into she, a pocket. She despair is, in fact, well, you know what she told me? She told me this two nights ago. She said, she was like, I am so excited about your Christmas gift. She was like, you, I'm giving you. That you're giving her? No, she's giving me. She Good. said, I'm giving you the, be it is the best gift you you will have ever received. Crap. And she didn't even know we were doing this. And then she said, you know what? You shouldn't even get me anything. Because it won't top <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. You shouldn't even get me anything because it just will pale in comparison. And you whipped out the contract. You're like, let me get that in writing. I've no. already worked it no, out. So I'm still, so I, and actually she will say, Two things That's have a lot happened. of pressure on you. You feel cool about that? You're, you, uh, uh, fine, she's a good gift The giver. point that I'm getting to is that her expectations have centered, lowered, sunk, whatever you wanna say. My gifting ability and my Plummeted. listening ability has gotten better. And the graph of gifting expectations and gifting ability has some, we've, we've met in the middle. I've gotten better, her expectations have lowered. And I've actually hit it out of the park a couple of times. Most recently for her birthday last year, which you were a part of when I did the whole cameo thing with all the mm -hmm. friends and family and the yeah, celebrities, and then I gave her something else too, and I've kind of forgotten at this point. But anyway, I don't feel that much pressure from uh, her. You, you wrote her a song, dude. Oh, I wrote her a song, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see, I'm getting better, man, but I'm also getting forgetful. I totally forgot, I wrote her a song for her. Well, you better hope she forgot, because you don't want her comparing that to every other gift. The, but and the, we talked about it at the time. It's like, you're gonna have to go back into a trough to recenter the baseline. Well, I don't feel a lot of pressure from her. I feel pressure on myself of like, I gotta do this. I gotta do something special. For her birthday, she will be with all her family and my family, though, because we're you know flying back to North Carolina, so that'll be special. And I did take care, with the help of my sister-in-law, who volunteered. I didn't ask her uh, to set up a special private dinner in some place. So we're gonna do that. That'll be nice. And then trying to figure out something to add on top of that. Anyway, I'm feeling pretty good about it, but I still have no ideas about Christmas. Call her down. Call her down. Okay, here we go. Now we're getting into it. Yeah, with me and Christy, um, it's never been that charged around the holidays. You know, it is a bit more of a focus uh, on the kids and on like the struggle to get things for the family. The, the conflict we have is that like, it has defaulted to her to get gifts for not only her family, but my fa extended family. Yeah. And that that's not necessarily fair and has been a source of, uh, tension um, uh, that, yeah, I mean, the solution has been to slowly just stop giving them gifts. <laughs> it's just like, we give you the gift of our presence and something that, not that just like, I'm, a, I'm gonna give you something to say you got it, but like, even if it's just a picture and giving my, a lot of my family merch is a big win, oh, I've discovered. We, no, we started doing that. Um, We're doing that again this year. Got it, well, I hope they're not listening, spoiler. But yeah, I think they've come to expect it. The and I'm talking about the nie I'm talking about the nieces and nephews. Yeah, nieces and I'm not I, like getting my mom like a hoodie. I mean, I think your dad wants a hoodie. But. Oh, definitely. Anything to continue to get recognized. Yeah, he, he wants to wear. Yeah, because for for Christy, it's Mother's Day and her birthday are like very very close together, and it seems like they're right on the heels of Valentine's Day. So there's like this triple threat of disappointment right from the, the Linkster. Right on the heels is, I mean, kind of yeah, pushing February it. February 14th and then her birthday, <laughs> like, May 13th. Yeah, you're like half the year is on three, the heels. Three months later. But yeah, you got I about a quarter to prepare for that. Uh, Jay's Blue Sunshine said, um, this prompt from you guys I can actually contribute to because the answer is easy, Roxy. She post a picture a teeny tiny, barely a palm full of chihuahua puppy my mama and daddy got me for my 19th birthday. Okay, so mm. you're an adult um, and you get, you're getting this puppy. Uh, Roxy grew to 
two and a half pounds and was the best thing that ever happened to me. We spent 14 years together. I, I, it makes me wanna tear up, you know? It's like, <laughs> I mean, we know what, you start talking about dogs that are gone and, but like, you remember those 14 years together and that super cute picture. But can you love a dog that's two and a half pounds as much as you can love one that's 20 pounds? Definitely. That's a, that is a big. <laughs> of course you can. That is a big life altering gift. I know um, when, um, after my papa passed away, my nanny was gifted a poodle, which was not a puppy, but like a, a full grown poodle for Christmas that was named Nicholas for St. Nick. I don't know if she changed the name or if that was just a coincidence. And she didn't, I mean, it's kind of dicey when you give somebody a pet and they're not say, asking for a pet. I would pet. say very dicey. Especially when it's an old woman, you know? It's I mean, like, when was the last time she had a dog, period? My papa had dogs always, but they were never house dogs. Yeah, yard dogs. They were yard dogs and um, she, it was not like a joyful moment when she got that dog, but that dog changed her life. Yeah. So, so the people you know? who gave, gave her that gift, which mm -hmm. I guess was was like Teresa family. and family. No, uh, that you're on the wrong side of the family. Oh, it was uh, nanny. Yeah, nanny got the gift, not nanny. Yeah, yeah, because you remember little Nicholas, the little little white poodle. Oh yeah, I was, I, I was I was I've been picturing that uh, after Papa died. No, that nanny that, well, had been. Given. I call them both Papa, but my so on my dad's side, Papa Neil. Yeah, he. Um. You know, he when he basically went for the most part blind. Uh, one of the th he he was given a uh, a dog named Bacardi, and then that dog kind of changed his life. And that Bacardi is still with Nana now. Do they know or like the reference? Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. but they didn't change the name. Okay, so getting a pet companion can be a life altering gift. In, in a good way, I guess in a bad way, but then maybe not, maybe you just do something about it. You don't Which, hear about those, I, I wanted in this prompt. Yeah, I wanted to give some 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 cat to the dog, some tip for the tat. Uh, Carter Hastings said, my family pooled some money together and formed the quote, get Carter a cat fund one Christmas so I could go out and choose a little friend and pay for all of the necessary supplies. A lot of, yeah, a lot, lots of expense goes along with it. And ongoing expense. Dave is the best little guy I could ever ask for. He, here he is, the cat in the box with the cute little pink nose on the white snout and then the gray. You gotta know, uh, I mean, I think that if you know that somebody, I mean, easily, if you know that somebody wants an animal, yeah, it's it's tough to just give one as as a prescription. It worked um, out for Nanny, but it it was there was dicey there for the first month probably. Um, I mean, it's not necessarily good for the animal as well. If it's I think like, I think this Carter thing does oh, this highlight is, this a, is a good, really this is a good, good system. One. I mean, you lose the surprise of the moment, but like for me, my personality type, you know, I want to pick out the dog or the cat that I'm going to spend the next you know fourteen. 20 years with. Oh, you know what? I'm just an epiphany I might be having, and it's going to be a huge disappointment now. Okay. If it doesn't happen, not for me. I, well, I mean, my wife doesn't listen to this podcast very often, I don't think. Thank unless, God. unless, like, people on Twitter tell her to. So if you're a fan of Jesse on Twitter, don't tell her about this. You going to get her a dog? No, what if she's getting me a dog? That's it. That would be consistent with the level of excitement that she, cause, cause she knows that I, I would, I, of all the things that I do and the subjects I broach on this podcast, what you're doing right now, I would not do. <laughs> I'm just being honest. When it comes to gifts, and, and this will come up in a story you later. You know what, it's not gonna I, happen. I hate, like, I, know, I can't, I don't, if someone wants to surprise me, I hate knowing that I, that I didn't surprise them. Like I want to make them happy. She wants to make you so happy. But here's the thing. I'm just thinking about the logistics of when our Christmas has to take place before we travel. Yeah. And the fact that we've already got to board Barbara for a couple of weeks when we when we when we go to North Carolina. Yeah, it's probably so not. it's like you can't get a puppy. You can't get a puppy right before Christmas 
and then not take care of it immediately as your own, as your own family it can't be in its own home. Right. So it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me because I'm on team second dog. It's just I it, it the amount of emotional energy and sort of logistical fortitude that it takes to make it happen is something to get over that hump. So like that's really the gift is I got over that hump. Here's the dog. But you, so the more you think about it, ah, it yeah, you don't yeah. think it hit me that it would be a perfect gift, and it would well it, also it would match her level of excitement. But it's too far in advance, too, right? I mean, did she pick out? Well, not. I guess you could pick out a dog, and then what if the dog is already later? in her house? <clears throat> what if it's in a cabinet somewhere? What if the dog's wearing a Barbara costume, <laughs> and Barbara's been boarded this whole time? She has been acting strange. I, she freaking peed. In our bed. Welcome to my world. Like, Lando's sh- like, I'm taking my squishmallow out of the dryer for the second time because Jasper's peeing on my peeing on my squishmallows. Okay, well, Barbara has been well behaved in this area yeah, for I a know. very long time. She rings her little bell when she wants to go out. She like rings it a couple She's of times. She's upset about something. What is it? Well, it's the fact that it's not Barbara, or that she knows there's another dog coming. Have you picked? Have you picked out? Have you agreed on the type of dog you want to get? Because that really starts to we're, support this theory. We're we're not as specific. Like we don't want a Barbara look like this. It's slightly different color. Like we you don't want a had, peanut butter version of we, Barbara. We have not like the McLaughlins don't get that specific. The only thing I've said is I don't want a big dog that requires a lot of activity. It could be a dog. Man. I don't think that our family su- would support that in the right way. Like we don't. We're not good enough at dog walking. We need a dog that doesn't. Need a whole lot of like energy. Do output. you want me to ask Christy? No, don't even. In fact, just forget I ever brought this up. It's oh, not going to be a dog. I'm we good at get forgetting a, stuff you get, brought up. We will get a dog eventually, but I'll literally forget about it. Like I, I, can, I don't. It's think like that I have a it. button in my brain that if you tell me to forget about something, especially something you said, boop, I've forgotten. It's about like it. the Men in Black button. Like I have one of those. Okay. So I've forgotten about or it. Or like the what we do in the shadows. So don't be mad at me. You will forget about this conversation. Yeah, yeah, the, or the, call it a Jedi mind trick. Yeah, I get, well, they don't make people forget. It's not gonna be thing. a dog, but it wouldn't be a bad gift because I, I think hope the, it is. I think the things that, that are necessary when you're thinking about giving somebody an animal is, I, I, you have to know that they've already expressed a willingness to invite an animal into sure. their home and life. Um. But just to round things off with the pet, Aaron uh, tweeted at us, my aunt and uncle, I'm saying aunt. No, you're assuming that, we're, uh, that it must be from like a certain part of the country or that's, something. That's not the South. My aunt and uncle got me goats in fifth grade. I bred them and managed a small herd for eight years. Looking back, the best part was that they lived at my grandma's house because I lived in the city limits. It let me get a lot closer with my grandma for going over there every day. That's cool. Not only is it, I mean, I appreciate the connection with grandma, but if every fifth grader in America could be given a herd of goats. Well, you have to make the herd. They just given given a couple. I, let, let's uh, forget about all the difficulties of like where they would be and what they would be fed. But I'm just saying, if you could have every fifth grader mm-hmm have the responsibility of a herd of goats for the next eight years. Yep, that's this so is. So basically like until they graduate high school. I like this as a social pro- program. All our problems as a society would go away. I feel that. Do you understand? Everything that we argue about, everything that people get so bent out of shape about mm-hmm. would completely go away and if I ever have the privilege and honor to run for president, my platform is gonna be goats for every fifth grader. And you know what? The environments help too, cause they eat trash. Well they also will like, they can mow lawns and stuff, but they can get out of control. So we might have to do some sort of cooperative thing where there's like, this class of fifth graders has a herd of goats. I don't know, I, we, I need my team to work on the logistics. <laughs> but uh, just know that that's my platform, goats for as fifth graders. As long as my team doesn't work on the logistics. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about your gifts and our gifts, but speaking of gifts, we want you to know that you people who wait to the last minute to get stuff for yourself, mythical stuff for yourself and for others, maybe for the holidays, Uh you're in luck because we have amazon.com slash mythical. Yes, you can get the stuff that we've got over there which is 
mostly or entirely different from the stuff you can get at mythical.com and it's all prime shipping. So as fast as prime gets to you is as fast as that mythical merch can get to you, okay? Or get to your loved ones. I'm gonna do it again, Kiko. Prime! And I'm not. And I'm never gonna do that. That's again. the official sound of Amazon Prime, not, and not really. You know what I was trying to do, right? It was like a uh, air horn. Yeah, the DJ air horn thing. Yeah. Okay, um, this one from Just Kate TM. When I turned 15, my grandma got me a sewing machine and gave me lessons at her house. Seven years later, I have a degree in costume design what? and I work at a theater running wardrobe. I, I might have to incorporate sewing into my goat plan at this point. You can choose between goats or a sewing machine. I feel that too, man. Okay, all right. You wanna be, do you wanna run with me? Uh, co-president? Co, yes. <laughs> The first ever co-presidents. They changed the constitution for us. You know what, us. I, I kinda wanna be vice president. I kinda want. The lack of responsibility. Heck yeah. Yeah, lo low pressure, got it. Um, I love this. Lily actually asked for a sewing machine and got it. And she, How'd that go? She did, she did sew some stuff and she still has this like handy thing about her but she, does, she never used a sewing machine that much. Instead, she would do more like um, hand embroidery, which is actually pretty amazing on like book packs, backpacks. Book packs. Book sacks, what do you call book, them? Book sacks uh, is what you call them. Jean pockets, <laughs> book sacks, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, the fact that her grandma gave her something that just, it, it ex either changed or accelerated, maybe even determined her life trajectory to this point with a degree in costume design, working at a theater, like just kind of putting the kindling together in the form of a gift and then like hit it, uh, then the, the receiver brings the spark and it fans into a flame that is a pivotal point in their lives. That's, that's the, you can't hope for more from a gift, right? Yeah, and, I, and some people might be like, well, I mean, if somebody doesn't ask for something and you're just for, you're forcing it on them, trust me, kids ain't gonna do what kids don't wanna <laughs> right. do. So uh, Kate obviously had a predisposition for enjoying this and it was it maybe even in her blood and maybe that's what her grandmother recognized. I try to give, but my version of this is giving my kids musical instruments mm -hmm. um, or put it, you know, and putting them in like piano lessons uh, Lincoln is interested in in production, so it's like, what what can we do to 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 foster that and see where it goes? Lily's got, it, Lily's taking more to it. Like she's saying, when she comes home for Christmas, um, she's gonna take her guitar back with her to campus, and she also has a keyboard, but it's so big she didn't want to take that until like she has more of a space where she can take that and the cat. I think by the time she's gonna take that cat. I don't know if I'm gonna want her to take the cat, and I'm I uh -oh. I didn't you didn't hear that from me. Uh oh. I'm just starting to understand. I mean, this is a whole different discussion. Well, I, can tell I'm your, just, I can tell by your sweater that I'll you understand cats. I'll just leave it at I'll, I'll leave it at this. Lincoln and I have many conversations about understanding how like how to connect with Sokka is totally different than the dogs, but being seeing some success there is rewarding. I'll leave it at that. Um, give a good give a good life changing gift lately. Well, it's interesting because I don't know. Is it you know? My Locke is a, is like me in that he's all over the place, right? And interested in so many different things. And so he has bought himself with his money that he has earned at his job three guitars. <laughs> okay. Now one was. Uh, According to him, the first one was stolen, but we're pretty sure it was just left on the corner. Uh, by him. By him in the neighborhood somewhere because, what is that app that our wives go on? Uh, next door. And it was like somebody had found a guitar on the side of the street. You, you, and you then, didn't retrieve it? Well, but Jesse was, was going back months and saw it. Oh. And so then when she reached out to the guy, the guy didn't respond, I think it's because dude, I 
put this up here like months ago and now you're reaching out to me, I've already pawned this thing, or whatever. Pawned it, it, was, it. it was a cheap guitar. Pawned it. And he's got like his app, his amp, you know, the, I, I was telling you about the amps, these new amps that communicate with an app on your phone. Of course they do. And you can dial in a sound like, I want this guitar to sound exactly like Jimmy John, Page? John Mayer's guitar in this particular song. Huh. So like slow dancing in a burning room, like that riff, right? Yeah. And then like, like plays plays it and it so doesn't sound like John Mayer, but it sounds like a 17 year old learning how to play guitar trying to play John Mayer, but the guitar sound, the tone is exactly the same. And he's like, Dad, what about Merle Haggard? Uh, so and so, so and so, and then could he, be holding <laughs> you. And it's that, that's that. Is it really awesome, like Telly sound? But you hope to give them gifts that that it takes off, right? But I, what I'm getting at is you can't you can't control it the, with Locke, and then and now and Shepard's playing piano, violin, and now is learning guitar, and so they're kind of doing that. But I think a, a guitar would be a good gift for for Shepard at this point because well, he's like just playing the ones that There might be three laying around school. or at least two. Yeah, they're electrics though. Oh. Uh, but you know, uh, one of the better, this is a uh, this is an opportunity for me to talk about one of my favorite gifts that, right. that, that I got because Jesse gave me my uh, Nirvana hand pan. Nirvana's the brand, I say that because they're based in Glendale, local business. Uh, but you know my like hand drum. Oh yes, but the musical <laughs> instrument. But I, again, I requested this. It would have been a great gift, but it's one of those things that like I had particulars. Yeah, I knew which one I wanted because she. Okay, I had played somebody's a friend's hand pan a while back. This is such a California years conversation. ago, right? And then so Jesse ended up getting I played me. my friend's hand pan. <laughs> I had some opinions about it. it. Hey, it's not just California. It would uh, Colorado. We could do this too. Yeah. Okay. Asheville. Asheville, there's lots of places in the world. She got me a Russian tongue drum, which is that, you've seen that thing in my house which is about that big and it's like a metal, it looks like a, you know, like a spaceship and it just has these little like U cutouts, like tongues and then you ha you hit it with a mallet or a little yarn wrap thing. Okay. And I liked that but it wasn't the, I can get into the rhythm and play with my hands. It wasn't a hand pan, right? If you mm -hmm. hit that thing with your hand, it doesn't make a lot of noise. So I found the people making them locally. I found, I researched all the keys and I wanted to get the uh, the Celtic scale, you know, mostly because of my Scotch Irish background and it seemed like a good place. So I had these ideas, of, oh, let's do the D minor. And so then she got it and it was an amazing gift. I find that most of the gifts that are my favorite gifts are the ones that were my idea and I selected and then told somebody what I, that's just basically what my mom does. Yep. I mean, how often does somebody, and again, my wife apparently thinks that this is what she's done, that she thinks that she struck gold this year. We're gonna find out, I'll report back. A totally unexpected, unrequested gift that is as fulfilling as one that you curated for yourself, that's the ultimate gift. Hmm. But I don't have a, I don't have many examples of that. I. I don't have many examples of like favorite gifts. It was difficult for me. I I, I think I'm just I, I just don't think that's my love language, so it doesn't resonate. But like the biggest gift that is, I mean, has to rank up there pretty high. And you'll have to help me remember how to tell this story because I haven't told this story in so long that um, I have a great I, memory. I've got to I got to pull it back up. Um, so I was 15 years old, and I was. I was just looking forward to getting my license and getting a car, uh, and there was a there was a pickup truck on the used car lot that that just a few blocks from my nana and papa's house in Lillington, and I was like, "That's the truck I want." Candy apple red, a nineteen eighty seven Nissan pickup with uh, chrome wheels, pretty redneck. Like it wasn't four wheel drive, but it kind of impersonated a four wheel drive. Did pickup. it already have the, the size tires yes, on it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was like larger tires than it needed, and larger than you would like see. Like if you yeah. saw this truck, it's and a little not, truck. You're not but from the, the south. Tires are a little too big. You'd be like, for it. okay, that's a redneck driving that truck. Yeah. 
And that resonated with me because that's <laughs> who I was. And um, my papa took me to see it, I believe, one day. And you know, this was in the fall. And then that was it. And then, how did this happen? Okay. Then I noticed it was gone from the lot. You can see where this is going. He bought me the truck, okay? You know, that's where this story's going. But um, how did this, how, what, what? It was gone from the lot. And then I think I had this theory that my papa had bought me this truck, but it was it was pretty early before Christmas. And you know, my birthday's in June, so I had a little doubt, but I, I did have an inkling. And then, um, let's see, it's Christmas, I believe what happened was, it was Christmas morning Oh, and I told you that I thought I had. I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you that I don't remember being involved on this side of the process. Uh, I told you that I thought I might be getting this truck. And then what had happened was you were told that I was gonna be surprised with this truck. You were given the information. Why do they tell me? Because I either my mom or my papa or somebody was just so excited about this gift. It's just like, I, I assume Jessie's as excited as she is, she's probably told Christy, that's why I'm not gonna ask her what your gift is, because I don't wanna have that information. But I'm sure, and I've already pushed the button. I'm sure that if they told me that I just turned around and told you. Um, I can't remember that part if you told me ahead of time. But the part that I do remember, and I'm actually, maybe you a, I'm a, well you know, I'm a good, I'm actually, I'm a tight secret holder. You tell me something, and if you tell me that you don't want me to tell anybody. As a 15 year old? No, I don't know what I was like at 15. I don't know what I was like at 16. Now, like, I will take something to my grave. Oh yeah, like, I do not snitch, I'm, man. I'm really good at that too. I take pride in that. Again, it's the button. I'm really good at it because oh, I, I remember the, it. I push the button and no. I, I don't remember it. I totally remember it and I always want to say it when I'm around the person who I know is the person who needs to hear it or would want to hear it. Because, I'm able to compartmentalize but, so much that I legitimately no longer have the knowledge. That's dangerous, man. That's it like has, not knowing you have a gun in your pocket. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, well, I haven't, it, I use it it's, with discretion. That's dangerous, man. It, it has bit me in the butt a couple of yeah, times. Yeah, right, because you're like, oh, I didn't remember that I wasn't supposed to remember that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, keep a secret is different than forget you know it. So I, I, I am questioning my technique. On Christmas morning, I'm at home uh, with my mom, opening presents, stuff like that, having the whole Christmas thing. I get a phone call, it's you. Hi, Link. And my mom's in the room, I answer the phone, I'm talking to you, I'm like, hey man, Merry Christmas, what'd you get, what'd I get? And and then you you start, then you're like, did you get it, did you get the, did you get the big red surprise? You was, whether you, whether we had talked about it ahead of time or not, <laughs> at that point you assume that I gotten it because it was Christmas morning, but I don't go to my Nana and Papa's house until Christmas night, so. I didn't understand your your complicated family traditions. So you were like. It could have been anything, let, big red just, surprise. Let's assume you were, yeah, that you were keeping the secret but also totally confirming the surprise. You're like, did you get the big red? And I'm, and here I am like. You already knew that you were gonna get this truck. And I didn't want my mom to overhear that you were spoiling it for me. Well, because there was no such thing as speakerphone at the time. So. I did. What well, my side of the conversation had to be really veiled. I was like, I'm sure, I, and I'm sure this went great. So <laughs> instead of yeah, who instead of saying like, I don't know what you're talking 15 about. Fifteen year old Link trying to make. I was trying to trying figure to, out like trying to manage two people at once. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, I you know what? That's probably going to be tonight. You know, I'm going to Nana Papa's tonight. I'm going to get some more presents. Some may be bigger and redder and rednecker than others, you, but I haven't gotten there yet. You said I, something like no, that? No, I have no clue what I said, oh. but like that was the dance. Well, uh, hopefully you didn't say that because your mom would have known that you knew. Exactly, and then she, I, I, she probably wouldn't have told Papa because this was his thing, you know, to like surprise me, huge surprise. I get there that night, everybody's opening the presents, lots of tradition, lots of family members. By the time we get done with the presents, He's like, you may have noticed that you, don't, you that you got less presents this year than you used to get. 
every other year. I, and, I, and I always love how he would go into like. Kind he, of a speech. If you gave him the opportunity to take the floor for something. You may have noticed that yeah, you he, do not have as many gifts suddenly, this year as you've gotten in previous it, years. It was like a political Though speech. all of your uh, half siblings and cousins have gotten the same amount of gifts that they've gotten in previous years. Let's walk around out back. And I'm like, now I have to act surprised about this huge thing and I just, I wanna give him the gift of me being surprised, but I'm not. But I was still elated, so I just channeled that. You know, I'm a performer. <laughs> <laughs> he had it parked out back and it's, it's just one of those car commercial things except in 1987 yeah, in a 1994. It's a 1995, 1994 commercial for a 1987 <laughs> Nissan pickup truck. Yeah, and I got in the thing and uh, didn't know how to drive it because it was a it's stick. Stick, yeah. Uh, but he, but he taught me, and that was a connect in a connection that we made, and that truck is still in the family. You know what? That's the third pillar of the McLaughlin plan as president. Okay. Okay. Pillar number one: every fifth grader gets a herd of goats or a sewing machine. It's up to them. Mm -hmm. Pillar number three, because those are actually two pillars. Yes. Okay. So yes. pillar number. Oh, I'm tracking. Pillar number three is every 16 year old has to get a manual transmission car. Mm. Now I believe it's in electric. A little late in that. I, I believe in electric plan. vehicles, and so I don't know if there's a way to implement this. So you know, electric I, race car. The elect the, the combustion engine. We got to get rid of that sucker. But we got to somehow give kids Still electric have a cars with a with a manual shifter oh. that completely makes it more difficult. Uh, because I think that made you a better person. I, and you well, know, you got the paddles, the shifter paddles. Oh, like, the shifter paddles aren't anything. No, yeah, that's you got to learn how to operate a machine in a way that is meaningful, and you got to take care of goats. Put them in the back of the truck. I kept that truck all the way through uh, college, hitting a tree, busting the radiator. I mean, like near death experience. So much happened in that truck. I almost died in that truck. So many experiences. Uh, I took that truck into marriage. And and then um, eventually sold it. it. Well, it died, and uh, and you got a pretty similar truck to replace it, but yeah. it was a Toyota. I got a Toyota. It was also it looked like a four wheel drive truck, big but it, wheels, but two wheel drive. It was which really was like one wheel a drive. A Toyota pre runner. Yeah. So it was a fake four wheel drive truck because uh, you know I was cheap. I didn't even get the extend cab. I was it wasn't like, a stick though, was it? No. I like that little truck. I, I, that was a good looking I truck. I wanna get a little truck again. I actually. They don't make little trucks anymore. That Toyota, that style of Toyota. Tacoma pre-runner are bigger now than they were. Like the early aughts. Yeah. Uh, that's a really good truck. Yeah, I like going back to that. My, my father-in-law had one of those that I drove. That's how I learned, learned how to drive stick. Speaking of that, I, just because while you're just talking about this, I am gonna talk about the best gift that I ever got. Oh, we'll do it. Um, because it's the same, <laughs> it's the same gift that, that, that you got. I don't know how long we had been married. Not long. We were um, on staff of Campus Crusade at the time, so uh, you know we were not making a lot of money. No, and uh, and so definitely not in a position to purchase a car for ourselves that was not used or a, or really a gift from someone else is what most of our cars would have been at the time. Yeah, and uh, Christmas morning. This was actually, and this was. I believe this was 100% unexpected. I, I remember it that way. You didn't tell me. You, so that I could call you before you got it and tell you you were gonna yeah. get it. So we're at my uh, in-law's house for Christmas Day, which was like two houses down from my own house. And, um, well no, you know, at the time we wouldn't have been, it was just before Locke was born, so we would have been, in, we were living in Chapel Hill, because we, so, but anyway, Chris and Ashley, uh, Jesse's sister and her husband, you know, our Key West buddies, uh, we're all inside the house, and then you know we're opening like smaller presents and clothes and stuff like that. And you may have noticed. And then they said there was some sort of speech. Please go outside, and we go outside, and there are two, two thousand two <laughs> or two thousand three, whatever year it was, was the year that this was. Mitsubishi Monteros. Two brand, one was gray, one was burgundy. No, one was burgundy and one was gold. Ooh. And uh, they were exactly the same, brand new. Some like, like one of like, uh, my father-in-law's like employees had like driven them up and like put them in the driveway next to each other. <laughs> and it was literally like, 
which one do y'all want? Like, I, it wasn't this one's for you and this one's for you. It That's was, trouble. And, and, Fight over the color. And we, I don't I don't remember, it was an easy decision. I, we took the burgundy one, I don't know why, but that was, and then I remember driving to Christmas conference because we always went to Christmas conference, which was the regional conference for Campus Crusade. The day after Christmas, we would drive. We would drive on the 26th because we were emceeing the, the conference. And Oh, I were... remember driving down Highway 40 and pulling up next to you and Christy huh? on the highway in our car that you did not, I don't think you knew that no. we had gotten it. And like honking the horn at you and getting y'all to look over and see our big ass SUV that we just gotten for Christmas. Yeah. I mean, that was a really unusual. That was, a, I mean, and we drove the hell out of that car. Then your tire blew out and we just kept going. That didn't happen. But that was that was the most unexpected and most helpful at the time gift because it was like we really we were getting you know we were thinking about having kids it was we we needed a car and we couldn't afford one ourselves so and, and it hasn't gotten better than that no since then. no sibling rivalry except over colors right you know you got to give them the exact same thing yep. you got to be equitable Lauren hooks and spines tweeted maybe not the best but the most memorable gift my great aunt got me the board game Sorry. Six years in a row every Christmas. Not as a joke either. Legitimately, she forgot it's what she got me each year before. The irony was lost on her, because it's called Sorry. Okay, there's a few things to explore here. Um, How could you, yeah, it's like. I think that this, I mean, first of all, you know, as we get older, Sometimes the memory begins to fade a little bit and this is a legitimate thing that could happen and she could just have forgotten and apparently that's what happened. But she's, but her thought pattern stayed consistent. That's that fascinating. Is, that is what I question. What, My, what should, what, I think that what she, does Lauren want? I bet she'd want a board game. Sorry's probably the best one. First of all, I'm taking issue with two things here. Number one, you've never said sorry like a Canadian until today. I, yeah, because I was um, kind of impersonating Lauren's great aunt, which I never say aunt either. I don't You've know. You've been saying sorry. Sorry. It's sorry if, oh, you're, if oh. you're from North Carolina. Yeah, I'm not being me right now. Okay, uh, but the second thing is, is I think that this aunt gives sorry to lots of people, man. She got a buck deal on sorry. She's got sorries. Somehow she came into a lot of sorries and has maybe her system is off and she doesn't know who's gotten what, but Lauren is not the only person who's receiving sorries from this great aunt. I mean, there's no way that she just, yeah. I mean, that is the other, pos other possibility is she thinks stars. about Lauren and she thinks she'll love this game. It is a great game. I like the feeling of that popper in the middle. Yeah, any sort of physical pop, feedback pop. that you can get. Pop, pop, it's very satisfying. Yeah. Um. It is a it is a and great game. And you don't game. lose the die because they're contained in that module. This is a good time to check. I, I wanted to check in with you on something. Because you've, been you've been waiting for this? You're waiting for the right time to bring what up? When, uh, when I was in Kansas City recently, uh, Locke and Shepard and I took a little drive into the city. They'd never, you know, never been to Kansas City. Uh, we went to this, I think it's called the River Market area sort of outdoor market. Shout out to the people at the Brazilian restaurant. Can't remember your name, but you're a mythical beast and you gave me a really incredible sandwich and then gave me some cheesy Brazilian bread balls or whatever they are. Okay. Wow, not gonna forget that. But there's a store there that was a board game store. Big board game store. Now. It's tough business. I. <laughs> But it's also I mean, like it was it also, is. also like Pokemon cards and stuff too. So okay, you know, um, irons in the fire. That's that's a good business technique. There was a lot of square footage for this kind of store, but maybe it's just because I'm so used to L.A. Like if you're selling board games in L.A., they're giving, gonna give you like ten by twelve. That's it's, it. That's it's all gonna you be get. like a board <laughs> game closet, <laughs> right? But in Kansas City, I guess you basically get what it amounts to like two Radio Shacks. I don't know if your Radio Shack scale is for your local Radio Shack, if it, it probably doesn't exist anymore. But anyway, doesn't. I love the idea of board games and so does Shepard. And so we're like looking at all these board games and I'm just thinking, man, we should get one of these board games. We're not gonna get one because we have to fly back, et cetera. But 
that brought me back to, you kind of started getting into board games during the pandemic and then there was this whole thing about you getting the National Parks game. Yeah. You know, the pandemic, the kids are back in school, Lily's off at college, has the board game, it's has a, it died, has the dream died? I, funnily enough, I was thinking this morning that like a holiday activity of ours should be breaking out parks and it would be a nostalgic event. The Neal family had never incorporated board games into our everyday Neal activities, but I you think gotta it watch can, Survivor. But I think yes, it can be a nostalgic. There's only thing. so much time. So yeah, I think we're, I think it might can become a holiday thing, but probably only parks. I think I could get. Is that what you wanted to ask me about? <sighs> yeah, I wanted okay. to know. Do you still recommend it? Yes. And the question I have as a follow up is, I think I could get just Shepherd into it. Jesse is a Jesse is a wild card. It depends on if like it just she's got a lot going on. Locke, forget about it. He he might yeah. step in for a little bit. But could it, are there games where just two people can play? And it's uh, fun? Well, first of all, there is a single player version of Parks within the game. Single player? So he can just play by himself. I don't know. I mean, that's not what I'm asking. <laughs> I'm asking are uh, there good board games? In fact, I think you can play with two people. Yes. I think so. I also might just do a little Google search. Just do Best that. Best two player. Stop bothering me with things that you can Google search. <laughs> two, two, two player no, I don't remember. board games. If you have any insight, hashtag your biscuits. Just I wonder at, what just you, at me. what you can do with six versions of sorry at once. Like is that like a mega sorry? Well I wonder if every single one of the little bubbles makes the same exact tone. Bryant Alvarado said, um, my college roommate gave me a case of Craft spirals, macaroni and cheese for Christmas one year. A case. Solid. Love it. He gave me a barbecue sauce sampler for my birthday the next year. Mm -hmm. Nice. One of the best friends I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, you thought you didn't know where that was going. So that's that's pretty cool, Brian. You got a friend who knows you. Um but it kind of makes me want to discuss our approach to gifting to each other. Mm. You we've got this like the main thing we go back to is that one Christmas when Rocky Five came out, we each went to, um, in my in my memory, Sky we, City? we went to uh, Roses. Roses and we were browsing the music session section and we each decided that we wanted Rocky Five, so we just both bought that soundtrack for each other. Can you name one song on that album? Uh, from the streets, coming the man, a fighter, doing the best that he can to survive. Who's who's who is yes, doing this? Yes, the survival of the fittest. Strive for what is mine. The Lord be my witness. It, I have no clue what artist sang that because it was not a recognizable artist. But I I knew that song. It was a rap song, and it was on our their soundtrack that you got me for Christmas, so I memorized it. Boy, I wish you would just take that part of your brain and apply it to other other things. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I mean, it's got some useless knowledge in there, man. Um, I, I, there's no way. I you could, don't have any useless knowledge. I could not remember anything about that. I don't know what the cover looked it like. It wasn't a good soundtrack. Well, of course. It was Rocky Five. What was the best Rocky movie I've ever seen? <laughs> and the only, well, you've seen Creed. No. Hmm. Ever since Michael B. Jordan's bodyguards gave me the hard shoulder at that party, I, I just can't go back to the B. Jordan. Creed came out before that. Before you were body checked by his bodyguard, Creed was already out. Maybe even Creed Two was getting ready. Um, I like Black Panther a lot. But we uh, we don't typically give gifts to each other these, well, okay, we, there's the two versions of us that right. are, blur, there's, blurred, there's blurred lines between the two. There's the the version that you see in the holidays that we celebrate. We celebrate each other's birthdays in front of you on the shows that we make, right? And then when the birthday rolls around, because we shoot things ahead of time, it's kind of like, oh, happy birthday, man! Yeah. I've already like acted like I gave you a gift on the on the internet, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That that came out today. Yeah, um, and I don't think that it's just. Again, first, I don't think it's either one of our love language to uh, receive gifts. Well, that's what, and this is what Jessie asks me all the time because uh, she's like, is your, like, is it, we gotta get something for your dad. We gotta get something for your mom. And I'm like, oh, and she's like, I want it to be like more thoughtful. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's great. 
Um, and then a lot of times we just settle on Amazon gift card or something like that, which it, right. for a lot of people is just like, this. but that's actually what my parents prefer in many ways. And they honestly, they don't, like my family doesn't care as much about it. Like I know that yeah. my dad is not gonna be like, oh man, you didn't think about me, but we always give them stuff. I'm just saying but that. But I think for, but we don't give each other stuff out of just an obligation and expectation. And we, we've we never discussed it actually. It's just that usually it doesn't happen. There's been some times when, I mean like I remember for your birthday, I got you that Hawkman poster one time and then I got you a, a wooden hold, holster that would like charge your your Apple Watch and your phone, and I was in kind of a mindset no, 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 of no, like no. it wouldn't charge it. Oh, I it, it was a piece of crap. No, it was just a piece of wood that you sit your oh, phone in, and it like if you projects. ran the cable through it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was is. a holster. It was a it, wooden holster. It's it like, was only wood. He likes Which wood. I do and like he has wood. an Apple Watch. I'm going to give him this, but it was a piece of crap. I was experimenting a couple of times with, am I gonna become a gift giver? Because, And I think it was, do I wanna be a gift receiver? And do I want Rhett to give me gifts? And then I discovered by giving you gifts, the thing I discovered was, it didn't resonate with either one of us. I think that the biggest thing, and it's not about our love languages, the reason why we don't give each other gifts is we know how difficult it is for each of us to get up the gumption to give gifts in general and I think we believe that we're on the same page that the amount of work that we would have to put in is more than the amount of enjoyment we would get from receiving. So it's like but we kind of have this unspoken thing that's like we both don't wanna, we don't have, it takes a lot of time and energy, especially this time of year, like what you were talking about to like give gifts, you're not, neither one of us really have a felt need for that. So it's like, let's just spare each other the trouble. Well, it's interesting because I don't honest, I honestly don't, like if somebody gives me a good thoughtful gift, I think it's really cool, but I don't expect it. I don't expect it from you. I've gotten, I, I can't recall, because again, my memory doesn't work in this way, but I've if I've seen some things, I've been someplace and I've seen something that's like around right. your birthday or whatever. I there's a couple of like examples that are kind of you know analogous to what you did with the Hawkman thing that I that that and I've I will, gotten you. I can't remember I, what they I, are. Yeah, I will clarify. I think I found the Hawkman poster because I was looking for stuff to decorate our office at the time, and I was like, you know what? I see. I Rhett would like this. And it it fulfills a desire that I have to have our office decorated. So it was kind of like me controlling how you decorate your part of the office. So like I'll take that. That's like it was kind of like I had an I had another interest in giving well, you a poster, maybe. But I think one of the things I'm discovering though is that when I find something, I'm going to use the example of what uh, what I found for Stevie for her birthday. Yeah. When I find something and I'm like, oh man, this is this is perfect and right. they're gonna love it. I get a lot out of that and I think it taps into the same thing that I like when I like cooking for somebody. You know, it's just like they're gonna think they're gonna have this sandwich and they it's gonna be this great experience and we're all together. So if whether or and you're not, talking about the liquid death yeah, Steve, sweat Stevie is that Stevie you got. is absolutely obsessed with liquid death the drink, which is just water. It looks like you're drinking like a tall boy you know, malt liquor, so don't drive with it. But it's just water, and it is really good water, and she just loves it, and she's always drinking one. She's very hydrated. And I just saw on but Instagram. But you weren't looking for a gift for no, her. No, I'm just scrolling Instagram, and all of a sudden I see this liquid death long sleeve shirt, and it's just like. Um, I don't know, I got an abnormal heart rate detected. <laughs> are, are, you, are you okay? I'm sweating. Hmm. I, maybe it's because I have my collar up too. Let me too check long. my my. Let's see what I'm, I'm at right now. I'm, se, I'm at Why se, are you making se, this about you? Seventy four. I'm just wondering. Is there something that we should in the, in the room? Is in the room that we should be worried about? Uh, I'm at ninety seven. Oh, good lord! I don't know. So I'm under a little stress. So I see this long sleeve shirt, and then I start scrolling through the wheel or whatever you uh, you know with the right. carousel, and it's like there's a hat, there's a hoodie, there's matching sweatpants, and I'm like. This has got Stevie written 
all over it. And the timing was right. And her birthday was coming up in like a week or two. I, I, um, I saw an ad. And, she, and, and by the way, she absolutely loved it and felt really like thought of and appreciated. Now I'm not saying and I do I, that. I told her I found it. Yeah, and we don't do that for Stevie every single year. We always get her something for her birthday. I think. Usually doesn't matter. But it's like. It usually doesn't resonate. It usually is like, here's a gift certificate to something or whatever, because it's tough to find the things that connect with the person. Yeah. Um, but I saw an ad for something that I was like, this has got Christy written all over it. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna buy it. It's not something I, I, I've only recently started buying stuff from ads. And by the way, we're gonna do an episode, our 2021 purchases, that's something we're starting to do every oh, year. Yeah. So that's coming up. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, I was like, you know what, I'm just, I really like this, she'll really like this, and I'll order it and I'll give it to her for Christmas. And now I'm thinking, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it to her now. I think it would be more of a surprise. But then I gotta start over for Christmas, so maybe I'll keep it. It's already wrapped, I'm kinda itching to just give it to her. Hmm. I don't know what I'll get her for Christmas then. But it's a thing that like she could already enjoy now. Uh, I mean, she, I'm not gonna say what it is even though I don't think she's listening When you either. find that stuff, man, you gotta go for it. College roommates who give gifts, I think that's sweet. Um, here's, an, here's another friend gift thing that I thought was uh, uh, creative. This is Aaron Clemenson, thanks for tweeting at us. My roommate, my senior year of college, filmed a little bit of almost every day of our senior year. He put it together like a vlog that needed, that ended up being over an hour and a half long. Having the ability to go back now and enjoy some of those moments again is truly special. Very cool gift idea. Um, and it's a gift that he was able to give to himself too. Ain't, ain't no shame in like a, a gift for you is a gift for me. Yeah, I agree with this. Like that Hawkman poster. Um, I don't know if it's called, it's called like what, the one second, one second a day or one second app or whatever. Yeah. Our, our, one of our good friends has done that. I every, think we end up year. talking about it every year, by the way. Yeah. This is like probably the third yeah, year sure we've we, talked about it, uh, but still never done but, it. But this, that's an hour and a half. That's that's ambitious. What, but also you get a little bit of the, you get a little bit more context, you know, than just, just the, the one second thing is great because it's just like, okay, it's 365 seconds and, and we're done with it. Yeah. But I do think that these, Man, I mean, this is kind of this kind of ties in with what we've been talking about with getting some footage of your your relatives over the holidays, telling stories. Just it's so easy to commemorate things. And if now. you don't know where we were talking about that, that was um, we do car. We, oh well, yeah, we do carpool vlogs um, on every month on the Mythical Society. So like a, a just a twenty minute conversation. Well, I, I think it's kind of like an ear biscuit in a car, but you don't. I think it's like an ear biscuit in a car, but I think that that's the wrong way to brand it, which is a separate conversation. Now, anyway, that's what we were talking about. I will say recording your elder relatives' stories, but you for know, posterity. But you know that, uh, you know, I'm sure Google's doing the same thing and other services, but Apple is basically doing a, you know, they're basically creating these memories, right? Like, oh, on this day. November yeah, they, 18th, 2016, like what happened on Google that? Google Photos does it too. I was actually looking at it this morning. Oh, let's, I'm just gonna, I don't where, where is it? Oh, there's Lincoln and Lily. Oh, this is in Hawaii. There we are, there's me at the waterfall. Yep, this is, this is a, so. There's when we, I mean. This is our Thanksgiving trip. We got into the helicopters. Tell me what you've been thinking about Hawaii so far. Don't touch it. So that's Lando not answering your question. Oh, this is cool. I mean, this is like, cause I don't want to take the time to do this, but so, yeah. and, and they, what in the world was that? A steering wheel of something. It was my leg, it was my bare leg in a car. Pure pressure, I think, is my number one job. <laughs> this is us going, uh, going for a hike. I get the idea. Well, I guess what I'm getting at is that what this friend took time to do the internet, App, big, the cloud, bro big Brother is now doing the cloud it for does us. automatically. Like, we don't need to curate our lives because the computers are doing it Yeah, and there's probably a like, give me my summary of the year. I mean, it, you probably don't even have to ask for it. It's gonna happen. I mean, probably happening right now. But I'm, so, I'm and, not and saying this, this is not people. a thoughtful gift, I'm just saying that Put like, it on VHS for your grandparents. I mean, what, okay. I, I just kind of relived our, thanks, our Hawaii 2016 Thanksgiving. Yeah. That we went together as families. Like, yeah. 
How often do I think about that? Not very Every often. Every day, I, I do. And I, and I so now, but now here it is. It's a, it's a memory on my, on my phone. Hmm. And I, you know, I could send that to everybody in your family, everybody in my family, and they would be like, "Thanks for taking the time to do that." Yeah, I put a little something together. All I did was literally open an app and hit a button. Yeah, there's a button. It said share. You could send it to the group right now. Mistina Mashik, uh, a personalized song by the lead singer of my favorite band from my husband for Christmas. It makes me so happy each time I listen to it. I don't know what your favorite band is. Wow. And is there, it, so there either. A you, local, maybe a local thing. E either this is a. This is Cameo on musical steroids or this is a low This is low either Cameo, this is a very accessible band or this is a big band with a, there's a connection between, uh -huh. between you know, that the husband has. Either way, it makes her happy every time she listens to it. Um, the Cameo version of that, the thing that we're, we're pushing for the Cameo montage stuff, uh, I think is akin to this. Yeah, and it's losing, it's, it's kind of losing yeah. its luster a little bit now as everyone begins to understand that this doesn't take a whole lot of work. It's well, a it system. Takes, it takes money and. But it's still a very meaningful it's, at the point of sale. Yeah, Not the compelling. point of sale, but the point of experience. Oh yeah, yeah. Speaking of thoughtful experience, Tyler Reese, final kickening tweeted, I had the goal of visiting all 50 states before I turned 30, which was interrupted by COVID. On my birthday, I woke up to the house decorated by my wife with things from my three missing states. Wow. And the rest of the day was spent doing activities and eating food from those states. So thoughtful. Very thoughtful, very So experiential. Sweet. I love the fact cool. that Tyler had this idea, first of all, to, to yeah. get to all 50 states before 30. I, I assume that being in trapped inside your home and just eating food from, I wonder what three states it, w it was that he hadn't been to. Alaska is probably one of them. Like if, if you have to just mm, state. I bet it's not. Or Hawaii. No, I bet it's. Um, you think it's like Vermont? Yeah. Rhode Island. I haven't been to Rhode Island. I don't Island. wanna throw the Dakotas under the bus, but I'm thinking Dakotas. It's easy to miss a Dakota. It's easy to miss, miss both South Dakotas. South Dakota? E I'm sorry Dakotas, it's easy to miss you. Um, Which one has Mount Rush less? That one's that one's tough to work up the gumption to go to. On a on a closing note, I thought that this one was uh, very sweet. Mm -hmm. From Rachel Homburg, when I was three, I got a mini recliner that matched. Okay, stop there. First of all, a mini recliner is a thing. Of course it is. And this is a great this is a great gift for anyone who's three. Well, not only are mini recliners a thing, but have you? I, I don't. I'm surprised that you guys haven't done this at your house yet. But um, lots of pe people, and it seems a lot of people with Datsuns are making little living rooms. If they have multiple Datsuns in their home, they're like making little living rooms with miniature, like couches and table, furn furniture and artwork around that's all lower level and it's like in a room in their house. And you oh, have to wow. give a d room to a dog, but I mean, you got one kid in college, you can take Lily's room and make it a dog room. Uh, I don't know, okay, start over, well, I, I interrupted When this. I was three, I got a mini recliner that matched my grandpa's. Ah. We would watch TV and eat our nightly ice cream next to each other in our recliner. Ha! My grandpa was my best pal and my only father figure growing up. Miss him every day. Oh, that's so cute. Um, and poignant. My grandfather had a set in his recliner. Um, it wasn't necessarily as inviting as it seems that your grandfather was, because he just sat in his recliner chewing on a cigar drinking something, I, it was, I think he just drank wine. My grandma just drank whiskey. She she would smoke cigarettes and drink whiskey and he would smoke a cigar and drink something else, but I think it was wine. And he had a little poodle uh, that would sit right next to him, honey bun. Honey bun. It, it would get like right up on him like oh, that. Oh yeah. So, I mean, there is a I could there is a th a thought that if I had a little recliner, I could go back and I have my little candy cigar and my uh you know my little apple juice <laughs> and your little fake poodle, your little yeah. little honey bun. Because there was no ice cream eating in that chair. And once you had a cigar and wine, yeah, you didn't need anything. I don't know what he what maybe it was whiskey too. But Mama Nell, buddy, she would have some whiskey every single night. I didn't understand that that was a, probably a problem until much later in life. <laughs> I think it's 
I think I think this is such a sweet memory, and sometimes it's like you know, gifts that you can go back to in your brain. Because I, you know, it's like if it's the three-year-old recliner, you're not actually going back to the recliner. It could be in an attic somewhere. Mm-hmm. I like that. You could put your Datsun in it when you grow up. Yeah. And put that on Instagram. Um. Well, thank you for sharing your gifts with us. The stories of your gifts. Uh, may your gift giving be especially um, thoughtful. I got a wreck. Yeah, that give, I think, give hey, it to us. My gift to you, uh, the gift that you can give to yourself, a musical pick me up. Uh, enjoy that Silk Sonic album. Anderson Pack, Bruno Mars, Supergroup, Silk Sonic. You got some Bootsy Collins, legend, kind of narrating a story that lasts about 31 minutes. You got a little bit of Thundercat in one song, which is cool. Um, but yeah, just it's just a a syrupy retro soul funk good time. So if you need that, pick me up. Give yourself that gift this holiday season. A little bit of the Silk Sonic. Get in your recliner. Grab your ice cream, your your earbuds, and listen to your heart's content. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. Tell us what you think. Talk at you next week. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.